We're back at it again, people. Pimp My Rig, new episode. It's been too long with CES and the holidays. I'm glad we're finally bringing the series back. So today we've got yet another system from yet another longtime fan of the channel. His name is Andrew. Apart from being a fan of the channel, Andrew is also a loving husband and a stay-at-home dad helping to raise his cute little baby. Beautiful family. I actually had the privilege of meeting them the other week when they dropped the system off, but not all has been rosy for Andrew. Not too long ago, he was diagnosed with depression, something that he always kind of knew in the back of his mind that he had, but it wasn't officially confirmed by doctors until uh, recently. And it's something he's been struggling with for a lot longer than the date he got diagnosed. And since his diagnosis, he actually decided to turn to PC gaming and Twitch streaming, in fact, to serve as a positive outlet, as a way to connect with other gamers, to talk about uh, his mental health. So I'm already feeling inspired as we go about upgrading this system today in hopes that the end result will give Andrew more tools at his disposal to really start connecting more with the Twitch community, the gaming community, and, uh, and to really spread positivity in that area. So that's what we're doing today. And while I have a very soft spot for Andrew because I, I personally deal with mental illness in my own family on a regular basis, I'm not gonna hold back any punches when it comes to roasting the heck out of his rig here. Look at this old crusty machine. That sounds like an insult you would hurl at a senior citizen. You old crusty machine. Oh, that's an old person saying it, to maybe to another old person. I'm really bad at roasting. Anyway, you guys probably can't see very well right here because this is a cube style chassis. So I think I'm gonna do this roast vlog style. Yeah, we're gonna do that. So let's first tear this thing apart figuratively before tearing it apart literally. Yeah, that checks out. So we've got the Core V21 from Thermaltake. This is actually not a bad, oh as I say that. This is actually a pretty decent budget micro ATX case, if you don't mind the cube shape. That said, it's definitely showing signs of age, the design language is clearly outdated, and overall I'm just kind of itching for a new look, so we'll see what we can do there. But for the love of God, if you're gonna buy a case with a side panel window, at least make sure that there's something worth looking at behind it. I mean, come on, what, is that a haystack in there? Good lord, I don't even want to open this thing. But alas, I must, it is the process. Okay, so that's right there, it's acrylic by the way, that's probably not scratched. Top panel off, Bloop. And the last panel. Oh, oh God, oh the horror. Did you drop a hot dog in here? Look at that ketchup and mustard. This isn't a computer, it's a condiment dispenser. Not to knock the GTX 1050 Ti or anything, but just look at how small it is in this case. Like, I mean, the, the video card is basically the penis of a computer. And right now, no female systems are impressed. Wait, what is this? What, did, did, you, did you seriously leave the plastic on the graphics card before you installed? Oh my, look at that. What, what is this here? We have an Elgato HD 60 Pro. I'm not gonna knock you for that. It's actually a fairly decent card. I think it can do 1080 60 as indicated by the HD60. We have a Gigabyte motherboard, which looks like it's B450M DS3H. Not a bad budget option. The Ryzen 5 2600 in here is a fantastic chip. I'll give them that. Six cores, 12 threads, really good price to performance there. But the Wraith Stealth Cooler, it's just, it's gotta go, man. Ya basic, ya basic. We got 16 gigs of DDR4 from uh, G-Skill, a G-Skill Aegis. How fast is this stuff? How fast? What did he get? 3000 for Ryzen. Shame on you, Andrew. You should have gotten at least 3,200. Everyone knows that. No, 3,000 is not bad, but I would recommend at least 3,200 speed kit and then potentially try to overclock from there. We'll see what we can do in the RAM department later on. Oh, geez. This is just sad. I mean, don't you have a kid, Andrew? This is a safety hazard. They could they could drown in this. What oh, power supply is this anyway? Oh, wait. I see a label. Power spec. What the hell is power spec? So I looked at Andrew's email and he did confirm that power spec is actually a micro center in house brand. Didn't even know they had one. But this is apparently a 550 watt unit, 80 plus certified, but we're not exactly sure. Uh, what rating that is. We'll have to pull it out and take a closer look. That's what she said. We can't really see it, but apparently there's also a power spec SSD in here, 480 gigs, which is the only drive he has in here. I think Andrew did mention when I saw him that he's got an external hard drive hooked up, but that's 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 not gonna cut it, man. What if someone trips on the USB cable while you're in the middle of a boss fight? Huh? Then what? Then what are you gonna do? All right, so not the absolute worst build I've ever seen in my life, but there's certainly room for improvement here. So we've got a lot of work to do, guys. Let's bring out the first round of upgrades. So the first thing we're upgrading is Andrew's memory kit. 16 gigabytes is a fair capacity for what Andrew's trying to do with this machine, but the 3000 megahertz speed was just a little too slow for my liking when you're talking about a Ryzen platform. So we're upgrading him to this 3200 speed kit of Aorus RGB memory. Not only is this gonna be much faster, especially with those high quality Samsung D dies, but these modules also feature customizable RGB lighting, which will look way better in his system than the current G-Skill Aegis kit. So we're gonna make sure that he loves the way this build looks as much as he loves the way it performs. Speaking of performance, 
performance, I thought, what the hell? Why don't we upgrade his already very good Ryzen 5 2600 to an even better Ryzen 7 2700X with eight cores and 16 threads. This will definitely give him some greater gaming and streaming capabilities and editing as well. If he happens to be editing any of his Twitch highlights, for example, he'll be much better suited and well-equipped for the job. So I think we should gut the system, give it a nice little cleaning, install these parts into the motherboard. I think that B450 board is just fine. And then we'll take it from there. Three, two, one, go. Clearly, I forgot to point out that this kit, this Oris RGB memory kit, actually includes two dummy sticks. You get four sticks, only two of them are active. The other two are, are pretty much dead sticks, but all four of them have the RGB implementation. They're, they're all supporting RGB fusion. Filling up those empty dim slots really completes the look of the system, and you know, having four of those sticks with all the RGB, it's gonna look really nice. Our 2700X slotted in just fine. There he is, isn't he looking pretty? Well, let's move on to some of the other things. I'm just gonna do it uh, free-handed here. So we've got the original Core V21 case here from Thermaltake, which again, like I said, is, is a great case for what it is, but also showing signs of age, the little outdated looking. So we're upgrading to the spiritual successor, also from Thermaltake. This is their level 20 VT, which almost uses the exact same internal layout. I don't know if you can tell through the, uh, the tempered glass window, but the internal layout is almost identical with a couple minor tweaks. The biggest change here is the outside aesthetic. You can just see from old to new, it's like a 10 year challenge right here. You get tempered glass on four sides, one, two, three, and four. So you can see pretty much every angle of the build, no matter where you are. It's also great that the these cases are the exact same dimensions because it guarantees when Andrew brings the new system home, it'll fit perfectly in place of where the old rig was. There are a couple notable changes on the interior, however. For example, you've got these three SSD trays, very convenient to have right there on the side, but the case does retain its water cooling support for radiators up to 280 millimeters. Now, since our CPU requires more cooling, we're gonna upgrade the Wraith Stealth to the Thermaltake Flowring 240 Liquid AIO. By the way, I should have mentioned, this video is sponsored by Thermaltake, so huge thanks to them for providing all of this amazing hardware for Andrew's build. And as always, you guys can find links to all this stuff in the description, but we've got these awesome Ring Plus RGB fans. They've got 12 LEDs around them, addressable RGB. The lighting is on the fans and the water block can easily sync with other supported devices. We've got native AM4 support, but most importantly, this unit's gonna do a great job of keeping our 2700X cool while we overclock it and looking fancy at the same time. Our RGB is really starting to come together, but it's not quite there yet. We're gonna have to employ the help of a couple other Ring Plus fans. We've got a 14 millimeter, or I'm sorry, 140 millimeter fan here, as well as a 200 millimeter fan that's gonna go at the front. Now this case, already includes a 200 millimeter fan at the front, but it is not RGB, it's just a regular black fan. So we're gonna bling that out and the 140 is gonna go at the back exhaust. And that is all we've got for now. So let's go ahead and get building inside of the brand new case and we'll circle back in a moment. Things are looking pretty good down there. Hanging in there, buddy? Okay, more on that in just a moment. We've got some, some other parts here. This is our last wave of hardware before we get to show off the finished build in all of its glory. So I wanted to swap out his existing power supply. It just didn't seem like it was gonna cut it for the hardware that we're putting in here. We're veering more towards a high-end build now, so I wanted to have the extra reliability and power to boot. So here we have Thermal Takes Tough Power IRGB Plus, 750 watts, so that puts us up from 550, and we have 80 plus gold certified, which is probably more efficient than what he was rocking before. Now we do have an addressable RGB fan built into the unit, but I'm wondering how much we're gonna be able to appreciate that once it's installed. We'll just have to wait and see. Well, I'm sure the stock cables in here look just fine. We're gonna upgrade the look a bit further with the TT Mod Sleeve Cable Extension Set. This is a combo pack with black and white sleeves, very color neutral, should uh, reflect some of the RGB lighting very nicely. Very excited to pop these in. And over here you can see I'm dropping in a two terabyte WD Black. Sorry, I should have removed this first. It's all reflective and stuff. WD Black, two terabyte. I'd like him to have everything internally and not have to lug around and 
external hard drive or anything like that. Uh, of course, that's gonna be paired with his existing SSD. We're not swapping this out. This has his operating system on it with his personal files. But wait, Kyle, that can't be it. You couldn't possibly just be leaving him with his old Zotac Mini GTX 1050 Ti, could you? Well, of course I couldn't. And my, my initial plan was to get him an RTX 2070 Duke from MSI. It was actually the same card that I used in my CES build, but I left that card at home today and I do not have time to go back and get it. So unfortunately, I'm sorry, Andrew, I can't use that graphics card for your build. <sighs> I'm gonna have to use a backup, um, which I hope you're okay with. It's the RTX 2080 from Gigabyte. This is their gaming OC model. I, I hope you're okay with this, this last minute change. This is the best I could do. All right, so the cat's out of the bag. These are all the parts that we're using for Andrew's upgraded rig. I think the last mystery of the day is what the system will look like when it's finally done and powered on. It's a question I'd very much like to answer right now. It's complete and it looks so awesome, yeah. Oh man, oh man, I am killing it. Actually, I am not killing it. In fact, I am screwing things up royally as usual because uh, let me tell you what, you guys probably already noticed this, but the HD60 Pro, the internal capture card that uh, Andrew was using to stream is no longer in the system. It's not in here because there's no more room for it. Basically what happened is when I upgraded the RTX 2070 to the RTX 2080, I overlooked the fact that it's actually a slightly thicker card covering up the bottom PCIe slot, preventing us from dropping this in the build. So it's, uh, yeah, it's my fault. You can't stream anymore, Andrew. Uh, it's just, it sucks. No, I'm just kidding. I'm actually gonna send him home with my own Razer Ripsaw external capture card, which even does 4K capturing, which is, is external. And it's, it's probably, it, it is less convenient in a sense, but at the same time, RTX 2080. Hey, so, you know, you're sacrificing a bit of convenience there, but getting a much faster GPU. So I don't know too many people who wouldn't take that trade, but let's not forget at the end of the day, the moral of the story here is that I'm stupid. Moving on though, hey, really good air moving through this case. You can definitely feel it from that 200 millimeter fan at the front. The steel inside is, is quite cool to the touch. That's always a good sign. Cable management in this chassis was a bit of a challenge. It took me a little bit more time just to get everything clean and organized, mainly because there are no like cover, like vanity panels right here to like cover up the power supply shroud so you just see right into there, uh, which isn't a bad thing. It just means you have to spend a little bit of extra time to tidy things up. So uh, it did take me a little bit longer than expected. Sadly, the full RGB effect of our RGB power supply cannot be appreciated. It's not quite visible. However, if you go to the back of the system, you can kind of see it. It's it's doing, it's giving you a little tease there. You also get a little sneak peek on the right side of the case there. So hooray for tempered glass. Apart from that though, this was a super smooth build and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Again, links to all this stuff can be found in the description below. Without further ado, Ladies and gents, it's about time we show this rig to its rightful owner. I can't wait to see Andrew's reaction. Even if it's not explosive, he might be a bit more reserved or camera shy, but I hope when he sees it for the first time, he begins screaming bloody murder internally. That's all I can hope for, really. So on that note, let's show him his rig. All right, we got gotcha. you. We, we snagged Andrew, we brought him in here, we lured him into our little cave. What's going through your mind right now? What are you uh, expecting? I'm concerned that I'm gonna need my sunglasses because of my cry, so. <laughs> 
Did you actually bring sunglasses? And an extra pair of pants. Do you have any expectations for the build? The biggest thing I'm looking forward to is cable management. That's something I never had and you know, I, I want it to look nice. So it, it could be the same system, just manage and I'll be ecstatic. All right, sounds good, man. Well, I guess uh, I guess this is this is it. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you your new build. Andrew, here is your new PC. Oh, oh my God. Take a minute to, to just reel it all in. Oh my God, I'm like shaking. Oh my God, dude, that looks amazing. Not only does it look nicer, we've also made some upgrades performance wise. So we actually upgraded your, your graphics card, which is pretty evident uh, aesthetically. <laughs> uh, that's, that's actually an RTX 2080 from Gigabyte. No way. Yeah. Oh my God. The other thing we upgraded that was pretty substantial was uh, the CPU. I mean, the Ryzen 5 2600 is already a fantastic chip, but since you're gonna be using this for gaming and streaming, we felt it was only right that you have at least eight cores and 16 threads. So we upgraded you to a Ryzen 7 2700X oh. that, uh, that you can get a pretty decent overclock on that. Dude, oh my God. I, I think I need to go get my pants. Like, <laughs> seriously, like, I'm, I got nothing, like real. In, the, in a good way, like, it's just incredible. Like, I never thought I'd see something like this on my desk, you know, as soon as I get it home and... Thermaltake also threw in their uh, level 20 RGB keyboard oh, and their mouse. So these are genuine Cherry MX silver speed switches, um, fantastic keyboard. This is the titanium edition, uh, USB pass through and all that. So Thermaltake really tried to hook you up for, yeah. for the build. All right, I'm ecstatic. I can't wait to get home. I'm glad that you really like it and I expect you to do great things with it. What's the name of your Twitch channel, by the way? Beardly Andrew. Beardly Andrew, yeah. I'll throw it up on screen. Guys, feel free to subscribe to Beardly Andrew on Twitch. Congratulate him on his new rig. Pop in for some streams. See what he's all about. All right, guys, that's going to do it for now. Thanks so much for watching. Toss a like on this video if you enjoyed it and get subscribed for more tech stuff coming at you really, really soon. We're going to go drool over this PC some more. Okay, bye.